With Git PR, we are trying to create the simplest Git collaboration service. We accomplish this by removing email from sending and receiving patch sets, replacing it with an SSH app, and making it feel more like a pull request. The contributor does not need to create an account beforehand or manage any forks. They don't even need to create a branch to submit a code change. Here's the demo. There are two user personas we'll be demoing, the contributor who wants to make a code change and the owner of the project. Imagine this is a new project building a recurrent neural network using PyTorch. For this demo, the contributor has already downloaded the repo and is ready to make a change. First step would be to add PyTorch to the code base. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, I, or just torch 3.1, I think is the latest, um, into a requirements.txt file. Now if we cat that, there's torch. And then maybe we also want to um, import torch. And um, maybe we just print a um, random tensor, uh, three by six, three row, rows, six columns, just to make sure that PyTorch is installed properly. Create a commit. Uh, we will say chore, add PyTorch, add torch to repo, add torch to requirements. And okay, so we have the commit. If we do a git log, we can see um, my username is Bob Sauer, and I created this commit. And as you can see, we've, we're just building off of main. Um, that is one of the fundamental differences between a pull request and a patch request. Pull request, you need a branch, you push the branch to your own fork, and then from that fork, you submit a pull request. Um, that's a lot of steps, um, especially for such a minor and trivial change like we have here. Um, one of the benefits of using git PR in, in this particular use case is it's very easy to just get a patch <laughs> submitted. Um, there's no forking, there's, there's, there's no like buttons in the UI that you have to click. This all can be done from the terminal. And the way it works is you use the git format patch command, nothing special here. Um, the only difference is that we, instead of the default format patch command, which will save files to your file system and then you submit those in using git send email, instead what we want um, is to simply std out the patch. And the reason for that is we're going to pipe it into our SSH app, which is pr.pico.sh, and then you just need to know how to create a PR. So here we're creating a PR on the test repo um, and piping it directly into the SSH app. So as we do this, it will automatically create an account if it doesn't exist for that user's SSH key. And it will try to come up with a, a good username. By default, it will use the user that's provided by SSH. Um, so I'm gonna add Bob so that I can claim that username. So we click that, uh, PR submitted, use the ID for interacting with this PR. So you can see the ID of the patch request that was submitted, the name that is associated with the patch request, and then the URL. We go back to the website. So here's the website. If we refresh the page, we now see a patch, um, chore add torch to requirements. It's in the open status. It was created by Bob, which is me, um, or the contributor in this case. And then when you click on the patch request, you, you'll you see a list of patches and the full patch is like the raw patch is basically uh, put in under the patch section. But the default is it's collapsed. So you can just see a quick overview of what has been changed in each patch. And you can see Bob Sauer is the one that submitted it. So now we're gonna switch to the owner persona. So here's the owner persona. Um, again, I'm in the repo already. Uh, the first step for me is to is going to be to pull the patch down. The way the way that an owner gets notified that there that a user has submitted a patch request is using RSS. So we have a bunch of RSS feeds and filters on those RSS feeds that that make it easy for both the contributor and the owner to receive updates without having to like create an account and add an email and all that stuff. Um, so it's all opt-in, you need to opt into the RSS feed to receive notifications. But just for the sake of um, for the sake of moving this forward, let's just say that the owner received a notification that there was a new patch request. They come in here, they can expand the help, which has a bunch of helper commands. Um, and we wanna check out all patches and apply them. If we're in here, we can paste, but for now I'm just going to print um, the patch request just so I can see what it looks like. And it, it's just a patch set. Um, there's nothing fancy here. So we can pipe it directly into Git AM and that's sort of the design goal here. So boom, I have applied it. Again, I'm applying it on main. I don't care about creating a new branch or doing anything like that um, because this is, so, this is such a simple, trivial example. It's very easy for me to just pull the patch and apply it onto main and then I can sort of have a scratch pad. 
okay, so now I'm, I, I'm the owner. I've applied the patch. Um, I want to review the code. So I could do a git, oh, git show. I can see everything that was submitted while at the same time I can also say, okay, look, they, they insta installed PyTorch, that's great. They imported it into the train. I actually want six rows by six columns. I want to submit a review with feedback instead of trying to bring an editor into a web view, which is what GitHub is doing, where they're trying to get, they're really trying to keep you in the GitHub website and web app. And, you know, they, they put a big editor in there and they have, um, you know, fine definitions and all that stuff, all the stuff that's traditional to a web editor or to an IDE they're trying to put into GitHub. Um, I want to flip that on its head with Git PR and, and force both contributor and owner to make changes in the code itself. That has a lot of great benefits. Not only is it simpler to implement, but also um, it's more robust because as an owner or contributor, I want my own IDE. I don't want whatever GitHub give, gives me or some other CodeForge. So that, that's a fundamental design decision here. You are making your review in code. And there's a bunch of downstream benefits to doing that. But for now, I'm going to just submit the review so we can keep going. Um, please make this tensor six by six. This, this is arbitrary, but um, this is really meant to just demonstrate how this works. And then we commit, um, review, overall looks good. I just have one comment about the tensor shape. Thanks. So let me save it. Now, how do I submit the review? Well, it's the same way you submit a, a, a patch request as a contributor. You get format patch, origin main, std out, and then pipe pr.pico.sh pr add review. Um, and what pr8? Add review 8. So there, we submitted the review. Um, and it, you can see that it was parsed properly. Now, if we refresh the page, you can see here that we have a review. Um, overall looks good. Uh, it's in orange or, or red, pinkish red to uh, sort of make it clear that this is a review. Um, and then we have the patch and here is the comment. And so now the contributor will receive a notification that, the, that their patch request has been reviewed and they have some comments. Contributor persona, I'm gonna reset head or reset back to origin main. And then I'm gonna do a git, sorry, ssh pr.pico.sh pr print eight. And as you can see, it has the, new, the latest change right there. And then we just do a git am three. And now we have the code change. I can go in to train. I can see the comment, please make this tensor six by six. So I delete the comment. And that's a form of addressing the comment is by deleting it. And now we just add commit chore changed tensor to six by six. And then again, we get format patch origin main std out, and then we pipe it to pr.pico.sh pr add eight. Oops, missed a step. And now if we refresh, we can see here that I deleted the two lines and made the torch tensor six by six. Flipping again back to the owner, um, get reset hard origin. So now we can do the same thing we did before which is just print the patch and apply it. And there we go. And this looks good to me as the owner. So I am going to accept, PR accept eight. And now if we go in here, it's been flipped to accepted. And what the owner does now is they would push to main. Um, and that's how the, or, you know, another, what you might want to do is actually rebase to get rid of some of these commits. Um, so you'd squash them and then apply. So what do we have at the end of all of this? We have a, a contributor that wanted to make a code change, was able to go from zero to accepted code change in a very short amount of time, very little setup, uh, no account registration that's handled automatically. You don't need to have any kind of a lingering forked repo for one small code change. And you just submit the patch and that's it.